So how would you feel if your children came home from their public school and said their Muslim classmates were praying in school and not only are school officials allowing it, they are setting aside a special period for it. Well, that's exactly what some people say is going on in San Diego and it has set off a fiery debate over religion in the classroom. While some of the students at Carver Elementary School play outside in the San Diego sun, the Muslim children stay inside and pray. And that period of prayer is now a hot topic in the local paper and on conservative radio stations. I understand that they're Arabic and it is okay to teach them Arabic, but it is not okay to initiate, engage, be biased, persuade these children into prayer. In April, a substitute teacher at the Carver School called a local radio show to say she was directed to set aside an hour so a teacher's aide could lead Muslim children in prayer. At one o'clock, according to, um, as per Mr. direction, Ms. comes in, district employee, students, these seventh and eighth grade kids without direction, close the blinds without direction that that was the the real flag if if i will that went up the, without direction closed the the blinds at that point i became extremely uncomfortable um felt intimidated and i left the san diego unified school district investigated the incident it says it found no evidence that students were instructed to pray by a district employee or that the prayer happened during instructional time. The district maintains that all 400 Carver students are allowed a 15-minute recess each afternoon. During that time, some of the 100 Muslim students do pray on their own, but they pray without guidance from the school. Edgar Hopide is a Muslim and spokesman for San Diego's Council on American Islamic Relations. I think uh, that substitute teacher along with others uh, should go and look into more uh, about Islamic practices and see that uh, we're not a threat to the society, we're American just like, like apple pie and uh, we want to be part of the society. But Muslim students have to pray at specific times each day. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Critics one, uh, like radio host Roger Hedgecock when claim they get special treatment. Uh, no classrooms are being set aside for Christian prayer. No classrooms are being set aside for practices of the Christian religion. We shouldn't do it in the public schools, and we sure shouldn't do it for the Muslim. The irony is that religious conservatives and others have complained for years about a lack of organized prayer in schools. But now that non instructional time has been set aside in schools like Carver Elementary, they complain that it is the Muslim students who use it for prayer. So let's go straight to tonight's panel, Republican strategist Cherry Jacobus, Ibrahim Hooper, the National Communications Director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, and Air America radio host Laura Flanders, author of Blue Grip. Great to have all you with us tonight. So Sherry, the U.S. Department of Education says all Americans can pray in school, but those prayers cannot be led by a teacher and at the school Muslims Christians or whatever faith you you follow are allowed to pray the same time these Muslim kids did so well, why this is this such a problem for you? This, this, uh, the substitute teacher was there said there was an assistant there uh, who was you know, working for the school who did come in and pretty much lead the students in this. And I've seen different reports on this. Yeah, the school this denies is, that, and this of is, course. And this is, so basically they're calling this woman a liar. What they, did, what they did, they didn't quite deny it. They just had a lengthy explanation that's pretty well parsed in terms of what the participation was for the teacher's assistant that was there. Uh, that's not enough to satisfy people looking into this. It's also, you know, this is special treatment. I saw a report where these kids came into the room, were led into the room, they, we, saw what they we heard where they closed the blinds, they shut the door, and in one report I saw where they rolled up the American flag. When this stuff starts getting out, and to think that it's not a reasonable expectation that Americans are going to question this, this is special treatment. I can just imagine what would happen and where the ACLU would be on this if a bunch of Catholic students decided that they were going to come in and have it written down on the curriculum, on the schedule for the substitute All teacher, right. that they're going to take a half hour and say the rosary. Okay, even him, a a you know lot of the, the facts that Sherry just mentioned are not facts that we can corroborate here at, at CNN, but let's get to the core point she was making, that she does believe that special treatment was offered these Muslim kids. We don't yeah. even know if the recess time was adjusted to accommodate yeah. the time of the day these kids needed to pray. 
The bottom line is that existing law says that students of all faiths have the right to pray in schools as long as it's student-led, student-initiated, voluntary, and not coerced by anybody. And that's what you're seeing here. The only difference is Muslims have certain logistical constraints that say uh, we pray during a specific window of opportunity. And, you know, that's what's being accommodated. All if right, other Abraham, hang on before you go any further, because I want to put up uh, on the screen something that a conservative blogger had to say about this issue. Islam is getting more leeway. There is no assimilation or exceptions in Islam in the area of diet or how they pray or even when they pray. They don't really want to assimilate and they're hoping to convert the entire United States. Is that the issue uh, here that Muslims I, don't want it, to assimilate? It may be, it may be the issue uh, for some uh, Muslim bashers on the internet. They love this kind of thing. But it's not the issue here. You have Muslim students who want to pray they have a minor accommodation of 15 minutes during a non-instructional time when they can pray if they so choose. Okay. And that's that's all there is to it. So, Laura, if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, if you're Hindu, you could have the same accommodation. Right. Laura, what is the harm? of any child, of any faith, praying during recess. Well, I mean, I think the point here is you have a story that has been whipped up into a frenzy, and there's nothing easier than to whip up into a frenzy this country with the word Muslim these days. We don't have the facts. As you said, the facts are very unclear, and the facts in these kind of cases are all important because it's complicated. I mean, we take Christmas off generally, not for religious reasons, but because it's practical. Most kids wouldn't show up. This is maybe a similar situation in an Arabic program. We don't know. What the courts have said over time, and I called the ACLU and I called Americans for Separation of Church and State, what they've said is it's okay to make the time available for students to pray or not pray in the name of religious liberty. What's not allowed is to endorse one particular practice over another. If the teacher really led this uh, prayer, that would be a problem. But we've only got one source on that. You Can know, the whole practice of this is endorsing here, one over another, and that is when we've seen the attacks on Christianity, the, the attacks on the nativity scene at Christmas time, you can't even have Christmas celebrations in the public school, and now we're going to such great lengths to accommodate Muslims, and I think it's political correctness gone mad, and everybody has every right to look into this, and they shouldn't have to be so sensitive it's about it just because it's Muslims. It's a political freak out without the facts, and what we need to do is take this stuff seriously and get the facts, because this is a classroom trying to cater to the population population that we've got in our schools that we're going to have to embrace more as we become a more multiracial, multicultural society. This is America at its best. Okay, we got to leave it there. Stay right there. We have a lot more to talk with you all about tonight. We're going to